Now, Richard Hannaford is joining us right now. He was actually in the 9-11 World Trade Center Tower, number two, and survived. Please, Richard, join us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's nice to meet you. Thank you. Please tell your story. Uh, hi. Uh, well, my name is Richard Hannaford. Um, wow, a lot of people. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm here to tell you a little bit about my day on September 11th of uh, 01. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I guess first and foremost, I mean, to move America forward, I didn't know anything about these people until about about five years ago when I first went to a field over in West Sacramento that was um, set up. And uh, so I happened to be there. So I met Scott and Sean and, um, um, oh my God, I'm going totally blank. Uh, <laughs> and Danny. Um, and, uh, and they were telling me about what they had done, and I thought, wow, what a, what a really cool, what a great thing to do. And, uh, you know, then um, now here I am. <laughs> um, and probably planning to get more involved in the future, but uh, back to my day. Um, I, was, I was in Tower 2 uh, on the 84th floor uh, when the planes, uh, when this was in its beginning. Uh, beautiful day, crystal clear, amazing fall day for the east. If you've been there, you know what it's like. Uh, and uh, a couple of guys were in the office and they were, they had, something was going on and I was talking to a customer and uh, I'll never forget it, in Nashville. And I said, you know, all of a sudden I see a piece of paper floating by and I look out and there's more. Um, and I told him, I said, you know, I don't know what's going on, but it isn't good and I gotta go. And uh, it's put the phone down, went over to the window and looked up out of Tower One, and there was smoke coming out of the building, like a chimney. And um, uh, well, <laughs> just it, something's really, really wrong. So I immediately went back to my turret, hit my hit my line, and tried to get through to my friends. So I, I, in April of that year, I had moved over from Tower One on the 104th floor over to 84. So I, I knew a lot of people, a lot of people there. And so it just went into dead air. There was nothing there. And uh, that was uh, that was the first. Well, that was all the, that was probably the biggest clue that said, you know what, this is time to time to go. We've got to blow this pop stand, so to speak. Um, and I told the guys at my desk, a few people, some people had already left, but uh, there was a group of us, about seven, seven or eight, and uh, we happened to hook up and went, made our way down uh, through the floors, and we got to the sky lobby, um, you know, and. As I say, it was just, we were just going down, the, going down, it was moving pretty quickly. Uh, we got to the sky lobby and that was sort of a, a midway point, not quite, but sort of. And it had a, a deli and a newsstand and other stuff. Um, <clears throat> and um, one of the young ladies I was with, so, you know, was talking about it for the last couple of floors and, oh, I forgot something, I gotta go back. I said, well, geez, I live in Long Island, I'll come in and pick you up, we'll get this tomorrow, don't worry about it. Uh, Regrettably, her, her name is uh, etched in the granite of the memorial uh, as a result of that. Uh, but we continued on. We found another another stairway, another stairwell, or a door with stairs for, for the stairs. Work on our way down. We got about halfway down, one flight of stairs, and that's when the plane hit our building. And that's when I learned what jet fuel smells like. Uh, and I, it was like being in an earthquake. You know, if you hold on to something, you can see where everything is, but good luck getting there. Um, and so then it was, it was really pandemonium. There was a lot, there was um, five ladies with us and there was two of us guys and, and it was, it really, it, <laughs> the, the mood was, was even, uh, strange is not the right word, but it scared the shit out of me. Um, excuse me. Um, <laughs> but I didn't know what to do except just push everybody to get moving. And the guy and I, we went, couple of girls, we started to, you know, everybody got their wits collected and we started going down. And it got a little bit slower because more people were coming down. Um, but uh, all throughout this time, the irony of it is that we were hearing from the, with the loud speaker system that it's okay, don't worry, go back to your desks and wait for the next announcement. I learned in 93 that wouldn't, you know, just wasn't the right thing to do. Uh, <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, we got down into the 20s or so and uh, uh, floors, and um, the fire uh, um, the firemen were coming up, and uh, 
That was, uh, you know, I can see some of these faces, you know, this is just as clear today as it was 17 years ago. It's hard to believe it was that long ago. Um, and then uh, we came out and um, we finally got, came out and I looked across the way and there was Krispy Kreme Donuts was across the street, but not across the street, but across the plaza. And it was, uh, I guess it's a, it's, it is the closest thing that I will ever come to seeing being in a war zone, but it was, it was gray, it was dusty, it was, I was seeing stuff that my mind could process. Um, it did, but I won't go into it. Just suffice it to say it was horrific. Um, and then uh, we um, uh, left there. I was standing there looking up at the, we finally got out and I looked up and I saw the tower, you know, Tower One on fire. I'm standing there with my buddy and you know, just uh, still trying to process all of this. We didn't know, we still don't know what happened. Well, we didn't know at the time, of course. Um, and then uh, I was standing there looking, and you know, I was saying I was saying prayers for the guys up in 104. Um, you know that I, many people that I knew, um, <laughs> this police officer who was the size of a small country came over and said, "Sir, you've got to move. You got to move." And I said, "Dude, I can't. What am I? You know, I I, I know 50 people up there, 60 other people up there." Um, I said, "Boy, you got to move. This is not a good place to be." And you know, there are, I'm seeing things, I'm hearing things, and it just, you know, stuff that I can't, it's very, very difficult, it's unseeable, in fact. Um, and after that, we were, uh, we walked away, and uh, this fellow and I, we got up to City Hall, which is about, yeah, it was about four or five blocks away, approximately, and that's when our building came down. We didn't know what, it, we, we didn't know what happened, other than to say that um, we heard something, and, uh, we were ahead of that whole big billowing thing that you saw. And uh, then we uh, we made our way up to a bar in Little Italy. I don't remember exactly, I don't remember the name. I don't even know if I could get there, probably could get there today, but. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, met a few other people from my, my firm, Euro Brokers at the time. And uh, we went, uh, I was waiting in line to um, call my wife at the time to uh, let her know that I was alive, because we cell phones didn't, we had no cell service, it was basically all, a lot of it came off the you know, Tower One. And uh, we got there and I'm uh, looking up, I'm looking at the TV and waiting for the phone, looking at the TV, waiting for the phone. And I see the spire on the number one trade center start to wobble and I thought, oh my God, this is just so unreal. And it started to collapse and I just, I, my, I gave out, I ended up in a collapse in some woman's lap who was sitting at the table. And after recovering from that, I was fine. Made the phone call and I walked in the her. Uh, knew I was alive and put that word out to my family. I'm just grateful for that. But, you know, through it all, it was so surreal. We were walking up Broadway. I remember we didn't really, still didn't know what happened, but then we saw it. people had TVs on top of their cars, portables, and, and all kinds of stuff. I don't, know, they were fun. I, don't, I don't know what it was, but that's how we learned the plane had flown into the building. And uh, it was so surreal. I kept expecting, like, a superhero to come swooping in and save the day. Um, you know, we didn't happen, but that's kind of what my thinking was. It was just so unreal. And uh, then we uh, we uh, ended up in Union Square in a bar. Um, I, I don't drink, but, um, well, uh, didn't. Um, and uh, the guy was, we had a few, my buddies had a few cocktails. And then uh, the next thing I remember is I was home and my relatives were there and um, I hadn't been drinking or doing anything for about five years. And on the table were all my old favorites. And, Johnny Walker Blue Label, Bombay Sapphire, and, uh, and my cousin chirps in with, you know, any sundry items that you might want, and it's like, it's okay, but I, I didn't know what I wanted, but I knew that wasn't, wasn't it, um, and I basically sat in my TV room for about the next five hours watching the plane fly into my building, um, but, so it's, uh, I'm just really grateful to be here, and, and also grateful, you know, to, to all those who have given their service and their sacrifice um, as a result of that event. Um, but anything that inspires you to, to help freedom, help us be free, because we know it isn't cheap. Um, I don't know. I think that's, I think that's what I got. Thank Richard Hannaford is the reason we are all here today, to remember. I remember I was on the radio at, at the time that it happened. Um, it was very early in the morning, and I looked up 
on the television monitor to see what was happening, and my first thought was we are under attack. That was even before the second tower came down. The late Lee Rogers, my co-host at KSFO Radio, looked at me and he said, we are under attack. And that's what happened that day. Our values, our democracy, our way of life was under attack. But we are never going to let that happen again. I'd like to offer now a moment of silence to pray for all those who lost their lives on 9-11-2001 and to pray for all of the children of the Gold Star family parents that we had with us today and all who have made the ultimate sacrifice for our country, our great nation. Color guard, retrieve colors. Color guard, all in. 